I was among the uh, the uncultured, the uh, the unartistic. I spent my weekend watching lots of football. Uh, Meryl Streep criticizing those of us who do that while she was giving a speech at the Golden Globe Awards last night, commenting that without Hollywood, uh, we would only be left with uh, with football on television and uh, mixed martial arts, which she pointed out aren't really arts. And of course, then the Hollywood audience, oh, 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 oh well said, handsome woman, ha, 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 ha. I was, I was not watching that. I just saw the replays of it this morning because I was tied up, especially with the Packers and the Giants last night. Uh, I, I did try to call the Giants wide receivers on the sideline. I'm assuming that the assistant coaches up in the booth were doing the same thing, but the calls kept getting dropped. So I was unable to get through. After football, I, uh, I did a couple of small things around the house and I went to bed. No award shows for me. And according to the numbers we've seen over the last few years, the ratings for these award shows, and I mean, there's, a, there's an award show on, it seems, every other week. And maybe that's why the ratings are tanking and getting worse and worse and worse. But Hollywood, of course, talking inside its bubble last night. I had to, I had to spend a good part of the program complaining about Donald Trump and how, see, th- there's still a belief on their part that they somehow know better than everybody else and that their views are the right views. Or that a lot of you share their views, which you obviously don't. Now, I've never criticized an actor or a singer. What will happen often is somebody achieves some sort of stardom because they have a big hit record or they have a breakout role on television or the movies, and reporters will go interview them, and, and then the reporter will start asking political questions. Oh, we just want to get your reaction. Well, if they ask me, I mean, I'd give them two. I, I and so I don't criticize people who weigh in on that, Ben Affleck and some of the others. Um, I should call them exceptions to the rules because they go out of their way to do it. Meryl Streep. Uh, who's the other one? Alec Baldwin. I mean, these people constantly think that we need to know what they're thinking about these issues. The old line from Laura Ingram, and it was the title of one of her books, Shut Up and Sing. You know, I, I don't mind watching Johnny Depp in the movies. I think he's a talented actor. But I don't really care what he thinks about all of these other issues. And yet, there's this belief that somehow that we're all pining and waiting to see what they have to say. And I've got news for them. That's not why we, we tune in. We tune in because we want to be entertained. Streep couldn't help herself, though, and she wanted to make sure that the world knew as well uh, that Donald Trump was going to be a disaster, especially in uh, in her part of the world. All of us in this room really belong to the most vilified segments in American society right now. Think about it. Hollywood, foreigners, and the press. Maybe they wouldn't be so dang vilified if they actually knew what they were talking about once they started talking about things other than their professions. I've seen some of these people on some of these quiz shows before. They, 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 they do, the celebrities will come in and actually you know, be on the panels, and, you know, they don't know a whole heck of a lot. I'm just telling you, they react like most liberals do. It's whatever, you know, they feel in their, their, their tummy at the time, you know, their emotional reaction in the pit of their stomach. It's not like they've actually thought all of this through, and for all of their talk about how great socialism is, why are they all living in 20,000-square-foot houses, jetting all over the world on private planes and Oh, I'm sorry, but that's for them. The rest of you should just shut up and go along with it. I'm, I'm telling you right now, uh, we're dealing with people who have been, I think, a little shell-shocked. And they don't realize they were told for years that they were the culture. They were told for years that people wanted to hear everything they had to say when it comes to politics and culture. They were told for years that they were special. And now they're starting to realize They're not. And it's very difficult for them to come to terms with that. 12 minutes after 8 o'clock, Bill Cowley with you on Top Story this morning on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. Between us, I don't even know what network aired this award show. I don't spend a lot of time watching network television any longer. I got myself a new TV package again, and a lot of that is a la carte, so I can choose the things that I'd like to watch. And, and I just, how, how can you justify sitting through an award show at night with so many other things you could be doing in life? Does anybody really, among this audience, I would assume that the number of people who actually sat through that show last night is about somewhere between nil and three. And that's about it.
uh, and that you know too many other people have too many other real world things they're dealing with to sit around and watch these pe- self obsessed people uh, talk about how world events impact their lives when they're all well insulated from most world events because they live behind gates, high gates. Uh, they're telling the rest of us walls are bad ideas, especially along borders and the like. But then they go build their own. Barack Obama's building a massive wall around his new house, his rental house in Washington. I wonder if the people who rented him the home knew that he was going to come in and make all these changes. So if, if walls are bad things, why do they all have them? We see that right here in Twin Falls, the people who were screaming and yelling that the rest of us were uh, just being, you know, prigs or worse or, or racists when we, we disagreed with refugee resettlement in some cases or with illegal immigrants coming here. Uh, those are the same people who are living in these beautiful gated communities where they're separated from all of it. They're not listening. Or they're not, rather, living next door to a home where people are hot racking in the beds. They're not, uh, they're not living in a, in a home where people next door are dumping the garbage out back and urinating in the backyard as if it's one great big toilet. They're insulated from all of this, and yet they're trying to tell the rest of us how to live. By the way, the temperature has dropped uh, from, well, no, it's actually jumped now. It's jumped from 39. It started at 40 when I opened the microphone. I dropped to 39, and now it's back to 42 on this very rainy and somewhat icy morning across the valley. We have a telephone caller with us at 814. Caller, you're up next. You're on the air on Top Story. Bill, Meryl Streep is absolutely horrible. And um, such a dedicated socialist um, and radical environmentalist, just to refresh everybody's memory, she and Eddie Albert, after the 60 Minutes diatribe, which was totally made up and false, about Alar that supposedly poisoned all the apples in the late eight eighties. Oh, and destroyed um, the apple business too. It did, yeah. They, and I work in the with some of my friends lost their businesses because of there was no truth to anything that was but they had the National Resources Defense Council all lined up for interviews the next day. Meryl Streep, Eddie Albert Eddie Albert was a you know, he was the Green Acres guy, so he was an expert, and Meryl Streep was an expert because right. of whatever. And he played a farmer I mean, on went, TV, yeah. Yeah, they, they, I refused to see any movies of Meryl Streep, and, and from the movies I've seen, I agree with Trump. She's just a half-rate actress, gets a lot of publicity, but the thing is, it was all written up in the Wall Street Journal. People can look it up. This was all a planned deal. They had no... They picked on Alar because people, kids, eat applesauce, they eat apple juice, drink apple juice, and it did. It destroyed uh, for a while. The whole apple industry went tank, tanked out, and it was really sad. And for her to come out again with Trump on this so-called uh, disabled reporter or whatever, that was totally ma- manufactured. Everything they say is either a lie or just propaganda, and so we just need to ignore them. They need to, sh- you know, shut up and sit down. But, you know, and I think they've been told that in this last election, but they refuse still to believe the election results, and so they're just going to keep hammering away, and as long as they have the Main Street media to, to put that line out there, and, of course, it was a headline on uh, Good Morning America this morning to just prove that point. So, but people just need to realize these people have an environmental radical agenda. And I just want to make comment about the floods in California. I left there 45 years ago, and there hasn't been a new dam, thanks to the environmentalists, to control these floodwaters. The Don Pedro Dam above Modesto was completed about the time I left there. And without that in there now, Modesto would be floated off the map. And so, you know, they get what they pay for out there, and they don't. They call <laughs> California, of course, the, the granola state, fruit, nuts, and flakes, because they run the show out there. Well said, and I thank you much for the telephone call. There is a piece this morning at Washington Times about California now moving in the direction of states, uh, states' rights, and uh, California complaining uh, about its need to hire Eric Holder, who was the man behind Fast and Furious, which got people killed on both sides of the border as the White House was trying to to prove a point. Holder has been hired as a lobbyist by the state of California 
which is screaming and yelling about the fact that the rest of the country won't go its way. Here's the thing. California is a country that is heavily dependent on the rest of the nation because of its massive debts. And they'd like the rest of the country to cover their debts. In other words, it's like going over to your neighbor's house and saying, look, I just racked up $60,000 in credit card debt. I need you to help me pay it down. They're not happy about this because it could force them to live within their means. They're making a lot of noise and rattling the cages about secession, but they're not really going to do it because if they did, there wouldn't be anyone to cover their butts. So this is this is the direction, well, you'll see more of them fleeing to places like Idaho. The threat there is when they come here, do they appreciate it or do they come here and think, aha, we have a place that we can colonize and then start all over again doing the same things that failed before. Bill Colley with you this morning on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. Going to be joined, speaking of flooding, by a member of the Twin Falls Police Department coming up just after 9 o'clock news today. And he'll talk a little bit about some emergency preparations in the city because of a lot of the high water we could have, uh, especially in, uh, in some of the lower lying areas. Uh, also coming up in about 20 minutes, Randy Staple is from Idaho Weekly Briefing. His latest column, newspaper column, is about the, the petition that's being passed that would uh, that would ban abortion in Idaho. Could be a test case then that goes on to the Supreme Court in Washington and overturns Roe v. Wade. And tomorrow, the people who are actually leading that petition drive are scheduled to be on the show with us. Just a quick reminder, on Wednesday, we're also joined in studio by one of the medical professionals from the office of Dr. Jonathan Tripp. We do this on Wednesdays, and it's an opportunity for you to get questions answered by one of the medical pros. Uh, Dr. Tripp's office still looking for new patients. They can often see you on the very same day if you call up with an ailment. The key there is often. Doesn't guarantee it, but it's often. And uh, we wanted to point out, too, uh, they have an office located on Fillmore Street on the north side of Twin Falls, directly across from the main post office. And remember, life's too short not to feel good. Speaking of uh, our conversation coming up with Randy Staples and this petition that is making its way around Idaho that, uh, that calls for a ballot measure that would ban abortion in the state, Randy went into that pretty extensively in his column. But mainstream media last week, while they chase celebrities and report breathlessly everything celebrities have to say, which ultimately is irrelevant to policy, they ignored the release last week from the House of Representatives, which investigated Planned Parenthood after the series of videos last year that showed Planned Parenthood promoting the dicing up of little babies and the selling of their body parts. Media doesn't want you to know what's in that report. I'll get to that in just a moment. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. By the way, I'm in uh, day seven now of a cold. I just speaking of the doctor a few minutes ago. I bring this up because I had something akin to a cold uh, over about four or five day period around Thanksgiving. And you don't expect within a couple of months or less than a couple of months to come down with something again. And yet what I've had, <clears throat> there you go, clearing it out. Started with a bit of laryngitis for a couple of days last week, Tuesday and Wednesday, and then morphed into a lot of sinus pressure and a pressure headache for a few days. Then over the weekend, a gusher with sinus drainage. Uh, and then uh, yesterday and uh, today, a, a, a dry cough. Not a painful one, but a dry, deep cough. And uh, a little bit more of that pressure headache. So I don't know what it is. But some people out there will tell you that, but I think we've been told by the folks at Trip Family Medicine, they'll tell you that, you could come down with something like the flu, but not everybody has the same reaction. Some people may be on the couch for two weeks and unable to move. And then others, maybe I'm one of them. Uh, I just deal with it in a low-grade way for a week. That's all I can think of. 825, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310 KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. I do want to mention our friends today as well at Waddell and Reed right here in Twin Falls. This is an investment firm that's been doing this now for eight years. Decades. Yes, since 1937. One of the oldest firms in the country to offer mutual funds, and they do something very unusual. Waddell and Reed offers two mutual funds, so you get a choice. They also invest with a conservative nature. They're not going to go out and say, you know, somebody comes down the street from your house and says, look, I want to start manufacturing pet rocks again. Give me 20 grand. Not going to happen. 
They'll do what has worked in the past, and they'll do it in that conservative nature. These are people who know what they're doing, and they work with you individually, knowing that your needs and wants aren't the same as your neighbors or anybody else that you know. They'll get you ready for retirement or perhaps for putting children through college. They take planning personally at Waddell and Reed in Twin Falls. Telephone number for reaching our show today, 736-0300. That's 736-0300. And caller, you're up next on KLIX. Hey, Bill. Real quick, uh, Meryl Streep, uh, she, uh, she bashed football and mixed martial arts, and I did a quick search, and the highest-paid actors for last year were Dwayne The Rock Johnson, a former pro wrestler, and the turned actor, and uh, Jackie Chan, who's a, a, all about karate and martial arts. And uh, I love it. I hope they stick with it. I hope they... Oh, I lost a caller, but uh, Jackie Chan, of course, because he's, he, he, his movies are popular all over Asia. He's going to make a ton of money because he's a huge box office star, not only here, but there. And uh, The Rock, by the way, Dwayne Johnson, is a Republican and a conservative Republican, which has to annoy his Hollywood liberal friends to no end. How dare you? You're a person of color. We need we white liberals need to tell you how you should think. Come here, black person. We don't think you're very smart. Not that we're claiming that blacks are, 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 are dumb, but gee willikers, you're all wrong voting for these Republicans. Well, Dwayne Johnson knows that whatever success you achieve in life is directly proportional. It's the old Vince Lombardi line. Uh, Johnson's dad was a pro football player. Lombardi said, and the words were this, you will find whatever success you have in life is directly proportional to the amount of effort you put into it. Well said on his part. And Johnson, I think, is I saw him in a movie years ago where he played the coach of a high school football team, but the high schoolers were locked up in a juvenile deten- detention center, and the critics just panned the movie, and I thought, not one of those panty wastes ever played high school football, because watching that movie, he was just like my coaches. 827, Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. I referenced earlier media burying a report that came out from Congress about uh, the, uh, the Planned Parenthood scandal and the selling of baby parts. Writing at the Washington Examiner, uh, don't have a list, uh, a name here on the writer, but it says Congressional Republicans convened a special investigation. Their report released last week ran to 471 disturbing pages. It includes evidence that Planned Parenthood illegally profited from trading in tissue from aborted babies, which ended up in the hands of biomedical researchers. It also found that Planned Parenthood abortionists broke the law by tailoring the type of abortion they performed to the needs of researchers, even when it put the babies at higher risk of being born alive. The investigators further found that several affiliates took money for services they did not undertake. The report made 15 criminal referrals for further investigation. They include five Planned Parenthood facilities, three procurement companies, and abortion clinics in four states. I got into an argument with a fellow at the uh, Press Tribune website, that's out of Nampa, last week about babies actually feeling pain when this happens. And, of course, I've seen research. Uh, He'll ignore it, and that's what he's doing. He's claiming there's no such thing. You know, it's just a cluster of cells. The thing is, if the baby can't tell you, which it can't, then why do you go ahead with this? You know, I I had surgery when I was two months old. Back then, they didn't give babies anesthetics because they said babies didn't have feelings. Well, anybody who's ever had a child knows that that baby, when it cries and it wants something, and yeah, they have, they they know, um, but this notion that somehow the, the child in the womb doesn't feel it. If you can't tell because the child can't tell you, then shouldn't you err on the side of caution? No, they would rather err on the side of convenience to promote their bed-hopping lifestyle. and In other words, killing other human beings for that convenience, for your sexual pleasure, is what this, for most of these people, not saying all, but for most of these people, is what this is all about. I've got a bit more on this coming up in just a couple of minutes. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX, and News Radio 1310.com. It's 41 at 830. As I mentioned, Randy Staples will be joining us, uh, and we'll have a discussion. Part of our discussion will be on this very same topic. Uh, I know consultants in broadcasting used to say, don't talk about abortion. Oh, no, you'll frighten people away, and it'll unnerve them. And oh, oh. Most of your consultants, by the way, are flaming libs, too. 
Uh, that may well be the explanation why they don't want anyone to bring it up. We are looking at some weather today, as most of you know, that is a little bit um, icy. Uh, that The rain has worked well on a lot of the snow and knocking it down, but a lot of it has just simply been compacted into ice. Later this week, we're going to get another cold blast. Not as cold as last week, obviously, but we're going to have some colder weather. And uh, I do want to remind people that if you're having some issues heating your home, you need to call the pros, and they're at Ramsey Heating and Electric in Burley. Uh, they'll come out, and they'll make sure that they get their repairs done. They'll get the repairs done right. They'll get it done right the first time. Problem-free, cozy winters are found at Ramsey Heating and Electric, 2600 Overland Avenue in Burley. The telephone number is 678-0459. That's 678-0459. Ramsey Heating and Electric, where they sell warm winters and cool summers. I've got this as well. This comes from Eric Erickson's The Resurgent. Looking for a great way to start the new year, the writer asks, well, how about relieving yourself of that pesky pregnancy by getting an abortion? Planned Parenthood President Cecile Richards took to Twitter to encourage people to start the New Year's off with a Planned Parenthood appointment. This is how little they think of this situation. I mean, the callousness of it is just absolutely beyond the pale. This is actually what she said in her tweet. Quote, start your 2017 off on the right foot. No time like the present to make an appointment at Planned Parenthood, unquote. All right, so she didn't necessarily uh, come right out and say get an abortion. But Planned Parenthood is the biggest abortion provider in the entire country. Uh, the numbers are staggering of, of little babies that are killed in these mills every year. You know, and it just it, it disturbs me to know one that you've got some of these abortion mills that are complaining because in some cities in this state, the neighboring clinics that actually encourage people to keep those children because somebody somehow might say, you know, maybe you're making a bad decision. They'd like to silence people for just sharing that. They don't want people to testify. Steve Millington talked about that last week on the air here. And obviously, this clash is only going to grow wider as the political divide in this country becomes greater and greater and greater. But... You know, they're making these sacrifices to ball. And I I don't know how you can deal with people who are now living uh, this neo-pagan lifestyle other than come right out and confront them. 836, it's 40. Bill Colley with you on Top Story on News Radio 1310, KLIX and News Radio 1310.com. We have a caller with us. And caller, you're up next. You're on the air. Yeah, thanks, Bill, for taking my call. Well, everybody be careful. These roads are horrendous out here today. I can bet, yeah. But, you know, back to your subject. See, people got to remember, <clears throat> the cruelest, meanest animal on the face of the earth is a liberal. Uh, a grizzly bear kills something that's just being a grizzly bear. A great white shark is just being a great white shark. Liberals want to kill babies. That is not human. They, 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 they want to keep score. They want to keep track. They want to... Oh, how many did we get this week? Oh, last year we were a little down. We better increase and get some ads out there and get, get business going here. We're talking babies. Little, tiny, never hurt nobody, infant babies. And for one of these bastards to, to say, well, it's the woman's right to do what she wants with her body, I cannot agree more. You want to tattoo it? You want to pierce it? You want to change it from one sex to another? I don't give a damn. But it don't give you the right to kill a baby because it's inconvenient for you. If you don't want it, give birth to the little thing. Somebody will take it. There are people out here called human beings that will take care of a baby. We won't kill it. We won't flush it down the sink. We're not going to flush it down the toilet. We're not going to stick it in a bag. We will raise it. We will take care of it. We will love it. And you know what something else we'll do? We'll turn it, teach you how to be a conservative. Yeah. Because the conservatives are good people. They're not you liberal pukes. Hey, I want to thank you for the call. Um, well said throughout. I want to point that out, too. Sometimes we get callers who express what everyone is actually thinking, but is sometimes too timid to say. And thank you very much. Uh, I have to say that, you know, this notion that it's about convenience. What happens if your child is seven and you get offered a job in, I don't know, North Carolina, but it would be inconvenient to take your seven-year-old. Do you stick some scissors in the kid's head? 
I mean, this is this is what the, that we need to be asking these people, and they like to sit there and say, "Well, it's not really a child." Well, if it's not settled science, and there are so many other things you claim that we need to follow because it is settled science, which one is it? The hypocrisy here is just beyond the pale. A woman who was interviewed in one of these baby part uh, mills where they were buying the body parts, she said, it's none of my concern. It doesn't bother me. Um, Again, the callousness of these people is just, you know, there's an old line. I, I knew a preacher, old Presbyterian minister when I was in college. It was one of our professors, and he said uh, one day, he said, he used the phrase, shovel a hole f- or shovel a coal for a hot reception. It's exactly what a lot of these people are doing, and they're doing it to themselves. And uh, they're in for a very rude awakening someday at judgment. 20 minutes away from 9 o'clock, Bill Colley with you on Top Story. Randy Staples joining us next from Idaho Weekly Briefing.